Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is more vision for young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to get into learning about discipleship part three. There we have our leaders. Leaders, please introduce yourself by stating your name, the church you currently attend, the position you held in the church, and how long you've held that position. Hello everyone. My name is Michelle Allen and I attend Life Worship Center Church of God of Prophecy in the Bronx, New York. I am currently serving as the associate pastor, also the youth leader. Um, associate pastor almost two years I believe it's two years in March and um, youth leader for about 10 years but I've always been a part of youth ministry for even longer than that um, so I give God praise for his call on my life my name is Jave Ellis I attend Bushwick Family Ministries Church of God of Prophecy I currently serve as the associate pastor and the youth pastor I've been the associate pastor for about six months and the youth pastor, I want to say going on, I just had this number the other day, about eight years. Hi everyone, my name is Renetta Hanover and I attend the Church of God of Prophecy in Guyana, Brazos. Um, I am one of the worship leaders and I'm also the treasurer of our church. And I've been a worship leader for about six years and I've been on the treasuring team for about three years. Leaders with very important roles and positions. I just like to give a little round of applause for all of your hard work, dedication to the church. Shout out to y'all. All love, all love. Um, now we get into our question for today. First question that we get into today is how to disciple. How to disciple. This was an interesting question, um, and I don't want to overlap with the other questions that we are going um, to address. But in um, just my research of discipleship, um, in order to even be at the place where we can disciple anyone, we have to have a relationship with God for ourselves, um, a prayer life for ourselves, and really asking God who he has assigned to us. Um, it could be in the church, it could be outside of the church, of whom we can pour into, of who we can teach, um, of who can shadow us um, in our various leadership positions. Um, but how do we disciple? It's it's basically a relationship, um, an agreement on with both parties, or it could be a, a multiple amount of persons as well, as God calls us to, um, to teach them um, the word of God and how to apply it to their everyday lives. Um, but I, I, I believe the, the, the root is understanding as someone who is called to make disciples is to ensure that we are prepared um, to have someone walk alongside us and to be able to um, guide them and to teach them and to be there for them on their journey of discipleship. So it's teaching in various means, which I know we will touch on as we go deeper in the discussion. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Pastor Michelle. Um, Definitely, you'd want to disciple. I, I think the prerequisite to discipling is having a relationship. Right? And it is through that relationship that you can um, teach someone and really, for lack of a better word, show them the ropes, right? Um, show them what the Christian life is about. Um, show them how to read, how to study the word, right? Um, show them how to pray, right? And just getting them started, right? And But sticking with them throughout their growth and as they mature in Christ, you're walking alongside them. Um, so that, that's what I would say. Yeah, I actually agree with everything everybody else is saying. I had the same points written down. Um, just remaining prayerful because as a disciple, naturally you would have to be hearing from God about these people also. So remaining prayerful with a close relationship with Christ. Also, making sure you pray to God for assistance, making time to meet, even because sometimes we're so busy, you know, you, you may not have time to actually sit and talk. So actually making time to meet these people or one person, one-on-one -on -one if they need it. And also the way you live your life too, I think is a way how you disciple, being an example. Amen, and I agree on all those points too. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for that response. We get into the second question for today, which is, what are different ways of discipleship? All right. Um, so discipleship is not just um, sitting down and, okay, this is how you read the Bible. This is how you pray. 
um, but there are different ways to doing it. So you may um, choose a time that works best for both parties of when you come together face to face. Um, we know with COVID that has been a hard thing, uh, but as things are opening up, <laughs> there's that opportunity um, to meet go out for, you know, a little lunch, breakfast, brunch, whatever, and actually spend that time to just talk um, and to hear the heart of the person that you're discipling and, and through where they are presently, um, just coming with, I don't want to say a plan, but as we are prayerful, just trusting God of how that session or sessions will go. Also, discipleship can be something that is fun. Um, we can say one of the young people are part of a basketball team and I'm there to just come and cheer you on. Hey, I'm there for you. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so discipleship is not just, you know, something that's so rigid. It's, it's an inter intertwining of lives because we're not just Christians behind the four walls, but we're Christians everywhere we go. We go to school. Hello. Say <laughs> Um, to the supermarket, say to the doctor. So it's it's allowing ourselves that trust to be built with every part of that person's life and vice versa. Um, so allowing ourselves to just not put ourselves in a box with discipleship. There'll be those times when we have to do it over the phone. Um, it may be a text message, an email, a voice note. Um, just being creative and being intentional about always being there. Um, there's so many different ways that we can facilitate discipleship, especially in our day and age. I love that because I, I think discipleship, discipleship, excuse me, is so much about um, teaching someone to do life, right, and not church. Right? And so, I, as Pastor Michelle, Michelle said, you know, going to basketball games or going out to lunch, right. And, and showing that individual, this is how a Christian lives. Not, it's not about just church in the four walls, but really going outside of that. Um, two ways for me that, that I think about, um, especially in the ministry setting, um, I think discipleship is most effective in small groups, right? So um, if you have a group, let's say a youth group of 20, you may wanna break it down into four groups of five, right? And I think those small groups really provide the opportunity to one, establish a relationship, but really get closer to that individual and really minister to their needs and see what their individual and specific needs are as you disciple, um, disciple them. So that's one small groups. The other um, medium is mentorship, right? Um, you mentor one, a person one-on-one, -on -one. you can disciple them through that means, right? You have a relationship with them, you're walking with them, you're holding them accountable. Um, that's another way that I've found effective I'm in, in well, since I'm always the last person to go, everybody already, already said what I wanted to say. So I'll be very short. Um, what I had was being an example, because sometimes you might not know that somebody already said, you know, my mentor in the church is actually Sister Michelle or Brother Ellis, right? So it's like being an example, I think, is a very important thing where you live what you say because you might not get the chance to actually reach and meet everyone, but there are persons who observe you and are looking at you closely. So to me, that's one way by being an example. And also the other way is what Brother Ellis said, which is mentoring, you know, meeting, making sure you take time to be involved in their lives, not just their church life and making sure, oh, you know your, you know, dot your I's, cross your T's, but also being very involved in their personal life because especially with youths, because I think that's what we talk about when we say discipline, it's really the younger ones. They deal with so much so early, you know, so really helping them out with life and giving them healthy ways to cope because out there we have so many unhealthy ways to cope with trauma and all these things. So just being there, being involved and helping out, you know, wherever you can with the younger people. Yeah. And oh yeah, I stole my answers. I'm going to keep it shortly. I agree. Now we'll be moving on to the third question for today. What are the important aspects of discipleship? Um, some, because I don't want to, I want us all to have a, a ch chance to chime in. So I'm going to try to be, give me wisdom, Lord. Give me wisdom. Um, <laughs> what to share. But I would say um, one of the important aspects of discipleship is continuity. Um, because there's at times when we may start that discipleship relationship and then it just one day it's it falls apart 
is no longer happening. I think the continuity um, is important. And there is going to come a day when that disciple is ready to fly on his or her own um, and begin to disciple others. But we will also continue to have that relationship and remain open with them. Um, something else I would share is um, being so allowing, I believe um, Pastor Javé already mentioned it, um, being real with each other, accountability. Um, because when we walk with somebody through this um, part of being a believer of discipleship and teaching and training and helping someone to grow, there's going to be times where we have to correct them, right? There's going to be times when um, things might happen and be like, oh, okay, I may understand why or where you're coming from with this, but this is what the word says. This is what Jesus says. This is how Holy Spirit wants us to address certain things. So accountability, and um, that's something that has to be understood at the beginning of the relationship that yes, I love you um, and I want the best for you, but they, there will come those times. I need you to trust me enough to let you know that when you were wrong or when you need to help with something and it should be vice versa. Um, <laughs> if you feel like in the relationship, I may have done something, said something to be open with, with one another and allow that accountability to be there because that's also a part of developing as a believer. We're not perfect. We are all going through our various stages of becoming more like Christ. Um, so it's very important to just lay that foundation and say, don't, you may not always like me, but please know that it's from a place of love. I'm not here to beat you up or to kill you, but to help to steer you back um, in the position to be the child of God that he wants you to be. And that was great. I, I absolutely agree. Um, not to be repetitive, but I think, you know, the foundation of, of discipleship is relationship. So I think um, just to restate that, that is definitely an important aspect. And I think correction becomes easier, right, um, when you have that established relationship. But I think another important aspect is transparency. Um, I think we have to be so careful in that we're not discipling someone from a position of I'm perfect. Um, rather, I, I like to make sure that in everything that I do, I don't preach perfection or mentor perfection, but I preach progression and I mentor progression, right? That, that's, that's what it is, that daily I'm, on, I'm in this process to progressively become more like Christ. It may not be perfect, but I'm constantly in this process and I'm committed to the process each and every day. So relationship and transparency, I think those are so key. You know, I look at Ezron, right? and I think he mentioned this last time. They want to know, you know, what did you go through? What are you going through, right? What did you struggle with? And sometimes, you know, the answer that we say is, you know, I've struggled too. I've had your struggles. Well, well, what are they, right? And if you don't have that relationship, then it makes it harder for you to be transparent, right? So this is why I say the relationship is foundational and so important because then you can become you can open up a little bit where as the spirit leads as as is necessary um, for you to reach that young person and really show them that, you know i've been through this i've struggled with x y and z um, i know you struggle with it too here's how god can help here's what i can do and show you how i overcame these temptations or these struggles yeah and just adding on to what everybody say because i had this similar thought also listening is I think is a very important aspect because I think sometimes as adults, we tend to know that, okay, we naturally we have more experience, but sometimes we try to overshadow, you know, to say, okay, I already know what this is. This is what you have to do. Instead of actually letting them get it out and trying to understand this specific person's case. So I think listening is very important. I think observing is also important. You don't always have to try to get it out of them. But as they speak, you know, over a month, two months, just look to see how, you know, how they react, what they do. You know, just to get stuff from your, for yourself also and from God. I would say correcting, which is something that you guys already said, correcting is something very important because sometimes I think we don't correct because we don't want to lose that person, you know, 
but I think it's very important so that they could know, even though I do like uh, Sister Misha was saying, even though I do love you, I do, I would not allow you to, or I would not encourage you to do something that is not right, you know, and the last one is just keeping in tune with God, making sure that even though you're doing all this and you have your experience and you think, oh, I know enough to say enough, um, always check in with God, pray about the person, pray for the person and see what God is saying about it and not just hear own knowledge. Amen. I would also like to add, you got a disciple with the Lord. Don't disciple from self because that's going to be a hot mess. It's going to be a train wreck. That crash is going to be very big. You got to disciple with the Lord. Let all your knowledge come in from, from the Heavenly Father. So I like to add that. Disciple with the Lord, not with well, self. This was the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this video. I appreciate you, Sister Michelle, Brother Jave, Sister Manetta. Thank you so much for coming along on this video. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send your notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>